Celebrating Chief Louis Carter at 70, a life of hard work, faith, and philanthropy. Chief Sir Louis is a Chuku Omubenu KSG, popularly known as Louis Carter, is a Nigerian multi billionaire real estate guru, industrialist, philanthropist, and the chairman of Louis Carter Group Conglomerate. Born into the family of late Augustine Omubenu and Mrs. Cecilia Omubenu of Njojuku Village in Urago Navy, his death of birth was unique because it coincided with the assumption date, which is 15th of August, a day regarded as sacred among Catholics, when the body and soul of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, was taken into glory of heaven. Three weeks later, on the 13th of September, 1953, he was baptized by the Irish priest, Reverend Father Louis Kettle, who gave him the name Louis. Louis Carter began his career by working with his parents in the Palm Canal business, where he learned the basics of entrepreneurship, business strategy, and market dynamics. He also learned the acts of perseverance, resilience, and tenacity from his early days, which set the tone for his future successes in the business world. Louis Omobeno, that's his real name, and uh, a.k.a. Louis Carter. Is, uh, I consider him a younger brother. We both come from Diojuku in Uruagun Newe in Anambra State. Uh, yeah, his older brother is my age mate. I'm older to him. I'm older with about five years, between four and five years. And uh, I give glory to God for his life because he's 70 years. Um, I've known him from childhood, from childhood. <laughs> Even though, like I said, there's a disparity, you know, between us of four years, four or five years. I remember in those days when we used to fetch a river called Okbuani, where we used to go to draw water every morning for our different families and different chores of the families. Uh, how we used to trek from here to between here, and it's about two kilometers from uh, where we live to fetch water from the sp- spring water called Ogbani. It was one of the most beautiful scenes and water that I've ever seen or experienced in my life. And uh, again, the other thing that brought us together is that both our mothers were dealing with oil palm business. So we used to go to the oil mill, oil mill owned by one man called Mr. Okenwa Abodike, somewhere in Urugu. <laughs> Uh, I remember the hammer time season went everywhere. It's so chilly, it's so cold in the morning. And our mothers have already spent the night walking their behinds off, trying to cook the palm kernel, getting readiness to pound in it and producing the palm oil the following morning. We all will, uh, you know, gather between, <laughs> around our mothers to give them any kind of help that we can. The help we can give is nothing other than to bring more firewood to cook the palm kernel itself and uh, in readiness for pounding. And uh, Louis was a very gifted young man from the time that I knew him. Gifted in the sense that uh, he was already participating with his mother, going to the market to buy the palm kernel itself. You know, sometimes when his mother is not is busy or doing something else, he will go to the market to start buying the palm kernel for her. So I think that was part of the place, you know, the, the beginning point of his establishment of himself and his life into commerce and trade. Uh, his mother used to give him credit because he used to buy this pan kernel even cheaper than the mother would have bought it if she did go to the market. Uh, so he took that line, and uh, you know, from school he uh, became he went into you know trading himself. While some of us went to school, I went to the army during the Civil War. After that, I worked partly for Arthur Briscoe before I went to the United States of America. Louis was already <laughs> not, because he never really learned how to trade from anybody. He was the type of person that can assimilate anything so quickly. He can give you, he can call all the numbers of all his friends in the phone numbers without even making any reference to any paper. So. I would say that he was a gifted young man, and uh, he has carried through like that, uh, you know, up to this date. So I give him credit for his uh, special skills in terms of trade and commerce. He knew how to make money from childhood, and he hasn't stopped, even as I'm talking to you. 
After the war in 1970, the horrible experiences some teenagers of his age went through discouraged them from furthering their education. It was at this point that Louis Carter thought deeply about their challenging family situation and decided to allow his younger siblings, who were also academically brilliant, to continue with their education while he joins the business world to pursue his dreams. Louis is that always boisterous, always hardworking, always thinking about how to improve things, how to do things. And uh, that's one of the part of things that drew me closer to him when I started watching his you know, strides. Strides is that he never gets tired about, you know, th doing anything. <laughs> he's younger than myself, but if I'm working with him, he's always leaving me with, you know, years behind. And I wonder why would this younger, why would I, why would he be, you know, why would he be, you know, as strong as this, even at this stage? I, I've, I've had the opportunity of going to exercise with him in the gym, and I know that he's somebody who can, uh, stay on the uh, on the treadmill for for two hours non-stop even at my age I, has, I started to learn from him the art of making money the, the art of you know of, of trading the art of you know having to acquire wealth and knowing what to do with the wealth you have you know because some of us they were not born with actually the you know need to start looking for money very early if you are lucky that your parents were able to send you to school he just went to school, hoping that you get a job at the end of all that exercise. But I found out that there are other people who, from child, you know, from day one, knew what to do, how to pursue their careers, and how to, you know, take it to a logical end. So I think that's part of the things I needed to I had to learn from him. Between 1970 to 1973, Louis Carter served his uncle Raphael Ezimara through the apprenticeship system, where he understudied the auto parts business. In 1973, Louis Carter launched himself into the world of business, where he established Louis Carter International Limited through a major startup capital, which was provided from the little savings of his hardworking parents, who were still into red oil milling. Because his initial capital was major compared to what the motor spare parts demanded, he began his business with small items like plugs, oil filters, bolts and nuts, and later graduated to selling pistons, engine blocks, and top gaskets. He was never intimidated and such small capital could not dissuade him. Between 1970 to 1977, Louis Carter distinguished himself in the business world, shuttling to and fro Lagos three times a week in order to buy and sell his goods. Louis' watchwords were honesty, hard work and determination. These qualities earned him the favor of many who came in contact with him. I find it very difficult to describe Chief Lewis is Chuku Ongbenu. Obato is all around Newe. Chairman Lewis Carter Group in a few words. Because we have come a long way. As a matter of fact, he was my sponsor during my wedding in 1985. So we have come a long way. It's a thing of joy that we are all alive today to celebrate this exceptional good man. He is, to me, a dependable ally. This is a guy who delights a lot of pleasure, pleasure in making sure that he's, you know, extending his hands of uh, help to people who are willing to work, okay, and progress in life. I can attest to that. You know, his philanthropy is immeasurable. He's a very good man and um, a Catholic to the core. He's a knight, papal knight, KSJ, through his philanthropy and help. And that he learned from his mother. What we call his mother is Omaka. You know, he was brought up through the block prison. That's why, whatever he does, every year he calls the block rosary to come and celebrate Christmas with him. So this he was doing it for Newe region. But this time around, he's doing it for the Catholic Diocese of Newe. It's massive. Have you heard about Louis Carter Foundation? I can tell you he has more than 250 students. He's paying for. Secondary, tertiary. 
it has more than 250 students and a lot of graduates from that foundation including many medical doctors lawyers and even reverend fathers okay is i mean his philanthropy is beyond measure and that is what gives him joy gradually but steadily Leicata international began to flourish Hence, the young Qatar began to expand and diversify the frontier into other lines of business ventures that much later metamorphosed into the Leicata Group Limited, with multiple subsidiaries which includes Leicata Industries Limited, with focus on manufacturing, Qatar Foods and Agro Industries Limited, with focus on agriculture and food processing, Sticks and Stone, with focus on real estate development and management, Leicata International Limited, with focus on general merchandise. Exotic Plastics Limited, and many others. Beyond his business pursuits, Chief Louis is also a known philanthropist and believer in God. Following the joy and satisfaction he derived from God's blessings upon him and his family, he desired to have a broader and wider reach to more indigent families and children. So on the 15th of August 2013, as he marked his 60th year, a spark ignited within him. This profound inspiration kindled the inception of a noble endeavor that will transcend personal celebrations to become a beacon of hope for underprivileged families. You start wondering somebody getting to the age of 70, why he is going to a place like uh, as big as Ebu and inviting people not even people of uh, his caliber, the, you say the bourgeois or the big men or the elites, is inviting the poor. A landmark bedroom like 78th birthday is inviting the poor, the indigent, the homeless, and uh, that will tell you the kind of person he is. And uh, I think the last time I spoke with him, he's, he's always passionate about that, the indigent people. And his group, he calls uh, that his group, that he's a member, the Block Rosary uh, group. Uh, so that's why he's inviting uh, the whole diocese, in Navy Diocese, the Block Rosary group in the Navy Diocese. The over 5,000 in number coming to eat and be taken care of. Uh, then he's also inviting more than um, 2,000 uh, ch charity homes. Uh, the disabled is calling them uh, so that's the type of mind he has uh, and I was asking why he spent so much why did he say well some time ago I think uh, when he marked his 50th birthday I think he they built a church and donated to the Catholic Diocese and still went uh, abroad in America I know he celebrated it in a very big way which the then governor of Anambra State, Konobi, uh, uh, and the wife, they were all present. The very big talk, uh, Bob Baker, his business partner in America, president of Campbell Tobacco, they had a very big lavish uh, sitting there and enjoyed. Even um, the last 10 years, when he celebrated his sister's birthday, he took over a hundred, uh, more than a hundred people. In fact, I was one of them. We went to London and enjoyed ourselves in uh, Hitting Park Lane, uh, Hitting Hotel on, on Park Lane, and we enjoyed ourselves. It was a very lovely something. We enjoyed it. So I was telling him, Chief, this is another 10 years. I expected you to take us to you. But I said, No. But when he came back the last time, he saw what the dollar is doing in Nigeria that people cannot afford to eat, and um, everything has gone up. People cannot even afford to drink coke now. So that uh, instead of wasting all this money abroad again, that is going to put it down here. And that's why he's taking the whole. Normally he does it in St. Louis, which is a smaller place. But say now he will throw it open in uh, St. John of the Coast to be able to accommodate up to five to 10,000 people to feed them, give them food. He founded the Luikata Foundation to alleviate the sufferings of the less privileged in the society and support human capital development, skill acquisition, and empowerment to youths. Despite the economic meltdown in the country, Luikata kept adding more students annually to the foundation because of his unquenchable love for education. It was in 2013 when we first had the announcement in the church 
that I qualified for a scholarship foundation, uh, a scholarship uh, program. Um, that is uh, what qualifies you that much. I've gotten admission to study any of the courses in university, federal universities, which I had one then. So I came to, I, I was there for the exam and I got it. So I, and I found favor in eyes of sheep. So since then, as more than eight years now, I've been part of his event and currently coordinating the foundation for like five years ago now. I've learned a lot. Like at the first, it was not easy, but Chief is a very simple person, very, very, very simple. And uh, he has human heart. He doesn't see you as a poor or little or big. He sees everybody equal. So it has always been a good and awesome experience so far. I'm an engineer today. I'm new here. I think I'm known for some people, and so I'm still growing. So I've really benefited so much from the foundation so if not from the foundation i don't think i'll i'll be who i am today so most of the connections i have now is strictly from the foundation and i praise god and chief for that the Luikato foundation has grown in leaps and bounds despite the economic meltdown most students benefit from the foundation annually due to his unquenchable love for education he's a very simple man like he's very supportive even when you see him you cannot believe that he's Louis Carter. That is one Louis Carter. You cannot even because the way he looks, the way he behaves with people, he's very supportive and loving. Even the first day I met him, I was like, is this man Louis Carter? The way he was among people, talking with children, with ah, I say, oh, the man is a very simple man indeed. During my junior secondary school, I came to the foundation. So then we took pictures with Louis Carter. Then in my junior secondary school, he paid for our school fees first term. Then and then he now we now pass our junior secondary school. They say we should come back when you pass your jam and everything. And when you got admitted into a federal university. So when I got admission into University of Calabar, I now came and meet his people, all those that are supporting. So they say, okay, I pass and they will sponsor me also. Miss Carter Foundation has really helped me in school. Even when I thought all oh, hope I lost in school fees and house rent, in school charges, everything, it has really helped me a lot. In December 2021, the Carter Foundation massively empowered over 100 youths drawn from Navy and across the nation with seed capital of between 1 million naira to 5 million naira to boost their businesses. The beneficiaries, who were never known to him, further endorsed his detribalized nature. His generosity knows no bounds. His other philanthropic ventures include building and donation of St. Louis Catholic Church, Newey, and Ambra State, building the Chapel of Adoration, Newey, in memory of his parents, Augustine and Cecilia, and Umwenu. St. Louis Nursery Primary and Secondary Schools built and donated to the Catholic Church. The Luikata Lecture Hall donated to the School of Nursing, Namdi Azikiwe University Teaching Hospital. To celebrate his 70th birthday, Chief Luikata Onwenu decided to host a Black Rosary Crusade where the poor and different charity homes across Anambra State and beyond will be fettered on that day, and cash running into hundreds of millions of naira will also be handed over for their welfare at the occasion. As uh, Chief Sir Louis is going when about us over and we'll be marking his 70th birthday. I just want to say a few words about him. He's so much influenced by King Louis the Ninth of France, who is also a saint. This particular king is the only king in France who was made saint. He was known by his love for the poor, for the sick. He cares for the poor and the sick. To the extent that there will come a time that he will finish feeding the poor before he will start eating. And he train his children that way. That they should value the sick, the poor among them. That they were also created in the image and likeness of God. This particular way of life of King St. Louis the Ninth of France is the a replica of the life of uh, Chief Louis. The name of Apatozora name he wants everybody to be happy. He likes feeding the poor. He likes taking care of the sick. Chief Lewis 
as a young boy was an altar server he was an altar server at St. John of the Cross parish in the way. so the way he was uh, treated by the white people who were then the priests the way they were taking care of the way they, they showed and love is part of the inspiration he had that is why he had a joke with people like Mosin Onwa Samba whom he passed through so that influence he got from the white priest and the Mosin Onwa Samba helped him to think about helping the less village he had to see hear the cry of the poor without thinking of how to alleviate their poverty that's every year as he marked his birthday on 15th of august he go to hospital to pay the hospital bill of those who could not pay their hospital bill he have a big celebration for the poor and needy and the children he has special likeness for the children so that they from time to time they grow up think of how they will help others each time you have opportunity to talk to the children he tell them why he normally have time for them and normally take care of them so that tomorrow they will do the same to others not just only helping them they will also imbibe that attitude of helping others through that means they will make the world a better a better place he has so many people under his scholarship he has people who have graduated from his scholarship the scholarship will mark 10 years this year within this space of 10 years he have trained a lot of doctors a lot of barristers and a lot of personnel in the society and even willing to help them till they become stable in the society this is the man chief lewis is in an interview granted to Pressmen, Louis Carter states that he hoped to put smiles on the faces of the less privileged, especially at these extremely tough times, and offer them the highly needed hope to look forward steadfastly. In his words, there are lots of premium packages that will be doled out. Louis Carter further used the occasion of the interview to address the rumor that some criminal elements diabolically and dubiously coveted over 40 billion naira of his estate investments recently in Abuja. According to Chief Ombuenu, there's truth on what you heard. Though simply unbelievable that some people would choose to reap from where they did not sow. These criminal elements have not only tampered with my investment worth billions, but also are hell-bent on destroying me and my family. The business guru added that it's quite funny but true, but the God that created him has made it possible for him to always win, so nobody can destroy him. In his words, I will watch these devilish manipulations and conspiracy fall like a pack of cards. The culprits will surely meet their waterloo and lick their wounds because justice will prevail at the end of the day. My prayer for him is that God will continue to give him wisdom, protection, and in fact anything that he would want to wish himself. I, uh, this, is what, this is what my prayer. Although he be going through a few, you know, the difficulties just like anybody else, but I know that he's able to overcome. He will overcome whatever challenges that he has in the meantime, and he will always bounce back. Uh, his wife used to call him a watching a mellow, and I believe that he's really watching a mellow, and he's somebody who. Uh, always think about people because if i think if i tell you how much he has done for those who are on you know those people who are on the poverty line you will really be surprised this is a guy who has taken children unknown to him from different parts of nigeria and i put them under his uh, scheme where he takes care of these children their parents their academic and you know what have you this is what he has done without asking for anything in return. He's a selfless individual, a person who thinks about people even more than he thinks about even his immediate family. And that, at least something that is commendable because, you know, he always believes that God has brought him into this world for him to help people. And uh, when he has not done it, he's, all, he's, not, he's not himself. He likes to invest in people especially people who are serious minded and uh, you know i think that all of these people with all the good prayers and uh, you know fervent prayers they have had on for him i don't think that nobody anybody will be disappointed i hope that he will know that he's loved by so many people and that uh, whatever he wants or whatever he's putting his fingers on Obviously, 
God will bless it and bless it mightily. One cannot just wake up and want to fortunately become a billionaire overnight, living a life of forgery and deceit. God always fights my battles, and this one is no exception. Meaning that when you're having what doesn't belong to you, at a time, nature will force you to surrender it. So the evil imaginations of these fraudsters can never prevail. I will recover my investments till the last cobble and everyone involved in this fraud will suffer for it. I've lived all my life for charity and God has been so good to me, even more than my expectations. So for me, celebrating with the needy is sacrosanct. I will say on behalf of my family, a very happy birthday to Chief Louis Izishuku Ongbenu. I pray God we will all be alive to celebrate his 88th, 90th, and century in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I wish Chief Louis Ongbenu good health because uh, he wants to see us, his children. We're more than 5,000 now in the foundation. Uh, so we want to see us grow. We want to see us every 31st coming out with good results and getting good jobs and making him proud. So I want God to give him more long life. He already has money. So God should give him more long life and never allow him to go out of his presence. One day first I prayed for good health, for him to remain strong for us because as He's a man that's full of activities and he always has good plans, not just for himself but for the society. So I wish he remains stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm very happy to be one of the people that will wish Louis Carter happy birthday. And I'm saying that may God bless him and that may he see more remarkable days of this day. I'm wishing him a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, sir. As Chief Likata celebrates his 70th birthday, his life of hard work, faith, and philanthropy serves as a source of inspiration to many young entrepreneurs and business leaders seeking to make a difference in their communities. Happy birthday to Chief Sal Likata, the unsung and umbra billionaire philanthropist. Happy birthday. Chief Lewis is it called? Happy 70th birthday. Keep living for us. We pray that God will keep sustaining you. For the good deeds you are doing for humanity. Bravo, cheers, enjoy your 70th birthday. Happy birthday, Chief Louis Kongben. We love you. God bless you. Happy birthday to you, sir. We love you and we can't cease thanking you for your good deeds and impact in our lives.